Hi guys and welcome back to The Wargamer. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I created my Fury inspired Sherman tank and I'll be showing you a few tips along the way as well. So here we have the tank before I started painting it. You can see the components a little bit more clearly and what goes into actually making this kit. So I used the base coat of the Rubicon Models M4A3E8 Sherman kit because that's what the Fury tank is. It made the most sense to use that um, to actually start as the basis of this vehicle. I've also added a few additional items on here, mostly some stowage items. Now the stowage items came from also a Rubicon kit. It was the Allied Stowage Kit. So that's the, uh, the jerry cans. There's a few included in the, the Sherman kit as well. But the actual uh, tank itself needed a few additional items, such as tarpaulins, uh, crates, and other items. So I basically used that kit to apply those. I even added in the additional 30 cal machine gun, which is mounted on the top of the turret as well. In addition to the pre-made components, I've also created a few components for this tank myself. These are notably the shelf that I've applied at the front of the tank in order to hold up some of the storage items and also the six logs which are hanging from the sides of the hull. And I'll be explaining how I created those next. To create the logs, I started off with some wooden dowel. Now I'm using three millimeter dowel here, but you could probably use a smaller variant if you want. And these are quite readily available from craft stores. At the moment, the dowels are a little bit too long, so I'm going to be cutting them down to a scale uh, realistic size, which around about six centimeters should do. But when you're cutting these, um, make sure you use some clippers for this, but don't worry too much about getting a perfect cut because you'll be roughing up these ends anyway. Now when cutting them, I recommend making some of them slightly bigger and some of them slightly smaller because very rarely would these planks be the exact same length. Now that we have the dowels at the correct length, we want to rough them up slightly to give them a more realistic appearance. At the moment, they look like perfectly uh, formed logs. So we want to use a hobby knife for this, and we want to cut away from ourselves and just gently cut out small sections of the dowel itself as we go along the length of the dowel. And towards the end as well, you can also um, cut them into a roughly um, conical section as well, just to give the impression that they've been fouled with a hand axe. Next up, we're going to be working on the rope bindings of the logs. And for this, I'm using a copper wire, and I'm going to be wrapping this around the end of the log. Now, the wire that I'm using is roughly 0.3 millimeters in its diameter. You want to wrap it around to create a loop around the end of the log. Once this has been done, you now want to bring in your clippers and remove any excess copper wire from the loop. Once we have the loop and the wire cut down to the correct length, we now want to secure the loop itself by applying a small dot of superglue to the area. Once the glue is dry, you can then repeat the process at the other end of the log. So that's how I created the logs that I have applied to my Sherman Fury here. Now, you can also see an additional strand of copper wire which holds the three logs together. This wire is the exact same wire as I've used before, and I just applied it after I'd glued the three logs to the surface of the hull. I just basically hooked it over the top uh, threaded it down towards the bottom, bent it underneath the actual mud guard of the tank, and then glued it into place. So that's the logs looked at, let's move on to the stowage shelf at the front of the tank. For the stowage shelf, you want to grab yourself some plastic card of roughly 1mm thickness. Then draw out a square on that plastic card that is 5mm by 26mm. Once you have drawn out these areas, you can then start cutting out the plastic card shelf. And for this, you want to use a hobby knife. The trick is when cutting plastic card is to just scour the area that you want to cut away from rather than trying to go through the full thickness straight away. Once you've scoured it through, you should be able to snap away the section that you want to remove from the plastic card. Once you have removed the section from the plastic card, you may need to use a hobby file just to reduce the size of the shelf a little bit in order to make it fit plush against the surface of the tank. Once you are happy with the size and shape of your shelf, you can then fit it against the tank surface itself. Now I'd recommend using super glue when applying it to the surface of the tank because the plastic card doesn't always melt with a regular polystyrene cement. So that concludes this guide on how you can make a few minor changes to your M4A3 E8 Sherman tank to represent Fury from the film of the same name. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my painting guide on how I managed to paint this tank using the MIG range of paints. Also, make sure you let me know what you thought of this guide, and I may make some more in the future. Also, be sure to check out both my Facebook and Instagram pages, which you can find links to in the description below, to find out what projects I'm currently working on. Now, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's you guys who make these videos possible. And I've included a link in the description below to my Patreon page, in case you're interested in also supporting me. And you can do so by donating from as little as a dollar a month. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.